everyone that's in the industry of devices, um, patient engagement, has understood that the challenge is not just creating a device that is accurate and very useful for a disease, but then the counter part of that is actually making sure the patients will use it. And patients themselves, right, they don't wake up wanting to be engaged. They don't want another thing to put on. I went with Garmin because I knew I could charge it once every 10 days instead of once a night with Apple, and I knew I would never do that. So I think that level of friction for adherence is what you're touching upon, or else people aren't going to be able to adopt it. Um, eventually, like today, I didn't sleep with my Garmin watch because yeah. I didn't find it useful for exercising. Um, but yeah, is that what you're talking around? Is that um, the, 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 all of the points of this remote physiological monitoring, it only matters that people are actually being monitored. They're actually in, engaging and using the thing. So if you don't put any steps in front of people to be able to use it, you set it up around them then hopefully that is this ideal future state. Yeah, this is, uh, you're right. So uh, all this stuff is all about data. It doesn't matter how you generate this data. It could be wearable, it could be ambient, uh, everything what you want. It could be implantable, but mm -hmm. most important, how you generate the data. And data became, with development of such devices, uh, became is very uh, complicated. It became multidimensional data. By the way, Oxyton delivered multidimensional data, more than 10 dimensions, 10 vital signs. And how to manage all these multidimensional data, how to build algorithms that enable to identify and even predict based on historical data what happened to the patient and how to avoid any complication. So here we're talking about, again, Back to difference between wellness and medical devices. Wellness device is good for, for preventing disease and chronic disease. Medical device is for preventing complication. So these two different domains of patient management, and there is a clear understanding of these difference. So we're talking about, in both cases, we're talking about data. We're talking about events. So medical device, very good, like Holter, for screening. And screening gives you understanding about some events that happen to patient. But again, here is very important how assessment, we're talking about endpoint, yeah? assessment of endpoint that you're waiting for a patient outcome. And how to, how to qualify this specific device for this specific endpoint. Because, for example, all medical devices uh, were working in the hospital. Now you take it, same vital signs, and move it to the home. You know, when you are coming to the clinics and get measurements of blood pressure, my blood pressure goes up to, I don't know, <laughs> 60 points. People immediately try to put me into the hospital immediately. And I said, I'm okay. I'm okay, it's because I'm in clinics. I want to run out from here and I will be okay. And this is what happens. We have to understand what's the difference from point of healthcare context, what we're going to measure, how to qualify a device. And if, for example, but in our case, we have we in, wearables who we are in, in the much better situation because we have many vital signs, multidimensional. And we can find correlation. And this correlation gives us more trust and more accuracy. Accuracy of what? Not vital science itself. Assessment of the endpoint based on correlation, on the pattern of this mm -hmm. patient. So we have the pattern. And pattern is much more rich than taking one separate uh, vital signs and measure blood pressure or measure lot of oxygen saturation. So if you have the pattern and you apply algorithm, you apply machine learning, you have much rich data, much complicated data, but much mm -hmm. accurate data to deliver final resolution and understand the, and qualify this product.